there, this is Sophie Delaplane here in Miami for an in-studio visit with artist, generative artist, Claudio Castillo, who's going to show us how he turns his watercolor paintings into non-repeating digital artworks. So this is a watercolor that's been split up into different layers. One, two, three, four, and five, the background layer. Each layer is then animated independently in many different ways and then the software puts it back together and when it does, it does so in a non-linear random way and that's what makes it uh, generative. On a four layer painting, uh, all the animations put together, if they were played sequentially, they would take up to 400,000 years to repeat the same sequence. If it was a sixth layer painting, it would take eight trillion years. Claudio, how do I make these interactive? How, how do you trigger it, if you will? Okay, there's a camera that is connected to the computer. That's the camera right there. Okay. And the camera sees you and then mm -hmm. triggers different events happening on... Like these, these, these animals? So if I get animals closer... Appear, yes, animals appear, different things happen. And uh, I, what's the sound that I'm hearing? Generative sounds of nature. It's a clock that plays a 24-hour cycle, so there's day and night. The background is a linear video playing at one frame a minute. On top, there are various generative layers that get mixed with the final output, and it's all being made and mixed in real time. The vine grows on the building during the day. By the end of the day, it covers the whole building. And this is the time right now. On the hour, specific things happen. These are videos with generative actions triggered by time and by motion. So will this be, at 3 o'clock tomorrow, would that be the same type of look uh, or would it be different? It be slightly different because it's generative. Animals appear, different things happen. You can see in this case the leopard is in focus and the background out of focus. So there's a focus pull with depth of field, which is triggered by the camera. If there's no one in front, there will be less action. So it's artwork that reacts to your presence. This is another clock. Let's see what's happening here. Oh, right. And this one, the blooms appear on the hour, and it's the correct number of blooms. So at 3 o'clock, you get three blooms. At 7, you get seven blooms. Wow. Well, we look forward to seeing your latest works. What are you working on now? So this clock is called Banco Taino. It's about the Spaniards arriving in the Americas in the 1500s, and... Um, the boats signify the hour, so the amount of boats corresponds to the hour that it is. And the east-west position of the moon is the minutes. So the moon takes one hour to go from left to right. When it exits on the right, the specific movie plays. In this case, it's a one o'clock movie. This is a five-layer painting and the sunflowers rotate 360 degrees in 24 hours following the sun. The tides are synchronized with the tides of Miami right now and the moon has the correct face showing. The foreground flowers are draggable with your finger if you have a touch screen. So when motion is detected the boats appear on the horizon marking the hour. The flowers face the audience as if reacting to them. They search for the person and if there's no movement, uh, they eventually will get bored showing emotion. They will return to their position for that specific time of day. This piece is called Florida Hue. And essentially it's a digital collage that's made up of uh, time-lapse video with watercolors and animation. It was originally created as a linear half-hour video that showed the color progressions 
on 360 so the purples would start a purple and would end at purple and went through the whole gamut uh, of color in between and um, I took that linear video and I started doing what I now call hue regeneration which essentially takes a linear video like this one and splits it up into color channels that it then reanimates and regenerates so it turns a linear video into a non-linear generative piece of art where all the color hues are always changing never repeating and creating a hue regenerated piece of art Claudio you said you were working on some political clocks can you show me a little bit of what you're working on sure because of the recent political turmoil we have all been in, I was um, inspired to make some pieces that reflected propaganda and uh, media and politics, of course. And these are posters from the 30s and 40s from Europe and elsewhere. There's a hundred fascist posters and a hundred communist posters in each one of these rectangles. There's also a hundred different wipes, which is the way one turns into the other. Oh, I see. So like so here... see the wipe happening, yes. And then here... Right. So one is wiping constantly over the other one. This gives a million possibilities to start with. And that is um, multiplied by many hundreds of thousands. And uh, so each one, of, each one of these rectangles has billions of years of possibilities of repetition, of non-repetition. And then you multiply that by 12. So whichever rectangle is black and white is the current hour. And it will take the poster a complete hour to write itself on the wall. So it's the black and white poster that defines the hour and the amount of poster on the wall that determines the minutes. So right now you're looking at 120 because one third of the second rectangle is covered. Oh, I see. So the amount of its complete rendering. Yes. So you're saying that's roughly one third. 120, yeah. Right, so one that would be, okay, right. I get it. It's a generative clock that also has audio. The audio is uh, different dictators. It's Mussolini, Hitler, and Franco versus Mao, Stalin, and Lenin. And they each take turns equal amount of time per side. And one speaks, and the other one speaks, and the other one answers, and the other one answers. There's also sounds of war in the background. There's sounds of um, uh, horror movies and all kinds of other sounds. And that is also mixed in real time, and that is, makes it a generative audio as well. They are also touch sensitive, so you can move back in time if you have a touch screen. There's a trigger which, uh, when you get in front of, it activates things like the blood. The poster is almost finished writing itself, and then we're going to see what happens when the hour changes. Every hour is different, of course. So on the hour, the bullets come out, and the shooting starts, and there's um, one bullet, two bullets, and three bullets, so it's three o'clock. And this happens at the top of every hour? This happens at the top of every hour. So the first minute of every hour, you get to see the whole database that makes up the actual piece. That is the total number of posters on both sides. And you also have uh, overlaid uh, layers of things like blood, usually. And um, they all get mixed together in real time and obviously generative. So the poster will now start marking the 3 o'clock hour any minute. And there we go. So the third rectangle is the hour, so it's now 3 o'clock. And this is the Islamic one. I have done all four major religions. Islam, Christianity, Judaism, and Buddhism. Each one is unique and different, of course. Geometric patterns that are morphing, changing color, and never repeating. 
Yeah, I feel like it's layer upon layer, like opening like a rose constantly, yes. right? This is different to the other pieces in that the change is happening because of the morph, the visual obvious change, but there's a hue regeneration. So the hand appear when there's somebody in front and disappear when uh, there's no one there. Oh, I see. So this is the time here. That's it's like time. a regular yeah, typical this clock. Is four o'clock. So these are 13th century tiles from the Alhambra Palace in Spain that are morphing between one another. And the correct phases of the moon are overlaid over the entire image. Oh, I didn't even see, see that. It. I see this right here. Yeah. Right here, so this is moon. the moon. That's a new moon, so you don't really see much. So if it were like a quarter moon, and we would see a distinct quarter moon, yes. would we? Exactly. Yes? yes? Okay. There's also audio, and it is also generative audio. Uh, in this case, there's eight tracks, mostly people praying, the sounds of war, the sounds of extreme weather on the outside and other sound effects and it's all being mixed and composed and performed in real time. So aside from the digital clocks, what other kind of work do you do? I see this palm tree here with the, it says Detroit Times, can you explain that? This piece is different from all the other ones, it's called Proof of Life, it requires an internet connection to function, it's uh, receiving an RSS feed from the BBC uh, this is uh, from 2008, and it is, uh, as far as I know, the first fake news generator. It is bringing back to life old newspapers with current information. So the headlines are real, the first paragraph is real, and after the first paragraph, it gets mixed up with uh, texts that I wrote that are paranoid ramblings. And there's also speeches by Obama and Trump. So the idea is that you read the headline, you start in the first paragraph, and you eventually realize that by the end it's uh, a political propaganda again. This is real. This is real. The first paragraph is real. And after this. the first period... So this piece of art is generative, and it's uh, being driven by the news as they happen and it requires obviously the internet to function. When the internet is down, you get the New York Times in Mandarin. And I like the Miami touch with the palm tree. Yes, the palm tree is in the middle to obstruct the view. I have done another uh, internet related artwork and um, it is connected to the weather. And in this case, the weather information comes in and it drives the wind on the palm tree is the wind speed, the humidity, uh, the heat, cloud cover, precipitation, all those are reflected in the artwork. So you set the art piece to whatever city you want and it will pick up the information in real time of that city and it will change the artwork to reflect whatever is happening weather-wise. These internet pieces are a little problematic though, of course, because you're relying on a third party. So if the source for the information ever changes a comma in their code, this piece will stop working and it will require recoding. I have also done commissioned portraits where I record the subjects and then I incorporate them into the artwork and they become another layer in the piece. Then the family appears when you get in front of the piece and they disappear when you're not there. The colors on these screens are magnificent. I don't understand how you're able to do it and have all this light coming in, this Florida sunshine and the bay, you can see all of that, but yet the colors on the monitors are crystal clear. I can see the saturation. How is it that you're able to do that? What is special about these screens that don't make it so that we're in a studio somewhere with closed blinds like a movie theater? Well, this is uh, an LED, interior LED screen. Uh, it's basically uh, LED technology allows you to do this. and. Um, 
it's ve it consumes very little power and it's a hell of a lot brighter than anything else out there and the beauty about this is what you're seeing right here is three tiles but you could have 300 tiles as far as I'm concerned this is the way to go if you want large format because there literally is no limit to the shape of the screen that you want this technology is changing rapidly and the prices go up and down but it is um, certainly a very good alternative there's other ways of displaying this artwork you can also project it obviously or you can make frames like these are frames that are made that hang on your wall there's a medium size but the standard size of one of these pieces when I quote is these over here which are basically 65 inch commercial um, monitors and they are hooked up to a mini computer like this one and a camera to act as a sensor you can additionally add a uh, touch screen to them so that you can interact One of the buzzwords in the NFT space is utility. How would you say your work offers utility for the user? When they mention utility, they refer to things like being part of a club or getting event tickets or t-shirts or it's basically additional stuff on top of the art. Um, what I call utility is uh, things like the moon and the tide so I do have the moon and the tide incorporated into my pieces and that brings utility into them and, the, and um, I also have the news the time all the pieces that contain the moon and tides it's because they will act according to the computer's clock I will display the correct phase In this piece, for example, today it's a new moon, so you won't see it clearly. The fact, the face of the clock has the moon face on it. You can see it here as well, and you can see it here clearly. It's black moon because it's a new moon. Today, June 29th, 2022. And that is the tide here in Miami. Now, if you were to sell this to somebody, let's say in Monte Carlo or Italy, um, would you adjust for that? Yes, I would adjust. I have done so in the past. That's one of the reasons why making an NFT out of the generative is problematic. Because once it's on the blockchain, it's immutable and you can't change it. In my pieces, you have to be able to change it, to adapt it, to customize it, if you will. Another reason is that they have huge files, up to 4 gigabytes or more. So my solution to make an NFT out of the generative is to put the executable only on the blockchain and have the media on the actual piece, on an external USB drive and a link on my Google Drive. So I understand that your work is really essentially a computer program where you have taken down different elements of your watercolor and put it back together. So you would take something like this? Yes, that's correct. This is uh, the original piece of art. It was painted on watercolors and then I divided it into layers. I animated those layers and then the software puts it back together. Aha. Uh -huh. So how do you get from that to an NFT? When you're running the art piece, uh, there is a function for it to stop and grab a frame, a still, and or a short video. That video and frame is then packaged as an NFT in a box like this. Oh, okay. All right, can I open box. it? If you open it, you can see you get a still, which is the one you have chosen and created. A high definition print, basically, on metal. Uh, an original piece of art that is ready to hang on the wall. It's a unique piece, of course, because it comes from generative. A certificate of authenticity from various art. Well, it makes it authentic and, and shows provenance. And then you get one hour of video. That hour of video comes inside one of these frames by infinite objects. Okay, so I can put that in my kitchen to look out the window, right? Right now it's running on battery power, so it will run uh, three hours or so. 
and then you just connect it to the power and it will run forever now of course this is a video and it will repeat after an hour so that same video is put on a hard drive at a higher definition because that is what you connect to the back of your smart TV and you turn it on and uh, run it and loop it you leave it as a different source on your TV and you watch your television, your Netflix, whatever you want and then you switch over to the art should you care to it will be just another input into your TV you have a party, you just switch channels and you play the art that is one hour of HD video so that is the NFT offering it's a print, it's a certificate of authenticity it's a video inside a video frame and a thumb drive with the same video at higher definition thank you Claudio for having us in your Miami studio I really don't know how you get any work done with this gorgeous view but um, I will leave you to get back to creating other great works of time thank you